Well, here it is, November, the week of Thanksgiving, here in the United States anyway. And I'm showing you some handheld camera work. I'm going to keep this one short. This is the office tank. And as you can see, the Amazon sword plants are doing very well. These were all the babies from the mother plant, which is hidden back among the other growth here. The Kabamba on the left is doing amazingly well. And that Luigia is way in the back now. Still got the bloom here. But isn't it amazing how the fish can swim against the current? Got a heavy filter here. And you can see those fish up in the upper left-hand corner just swimming for all they're worth. But they uh, have a choice, and they pick that area to uh, keep swimming in the current. The female swordtails still have not given any babies in here that I can see. They're still pregnant as ever. Again, no answer to that question of how long can they hold out. Been working on the snails in here with that white container, putting some algae tabs in it and then emptying it out every once in a while. Amazing how many snails I'm taking out at any one point in time. So anyway, this is where the office tank is. I've trimmed those plants more than once and still that kabam is doing beautifully. Last I checked there was about 15 black mollies in here, a couple big ones, and there's some babies have been hiding in the plants. There's plenty of growth to hide in here. So in that sense, this tank is doing very well. But the other thing that happened is my wife moved that better tank. You can see those two big black mollies in here. They're right in the dense part of that Kabamba. Don't know if I can zoom in on them or not, but there's they're always looking so pregnant. And yet just too few babies for them to really have been given birth. There's the nail. One of them anyway. And then down in the corner there, see one of those huge female sword tails. She's not going to come out and give a good shot, is she? And so now the beta tank is here in the office. And uh, just sitting up here on top of my file cabinet, looking pretty. She got rid of the shelving that it was sitting on, so she had to move it. And uh, when I wasn't looking, it got moved. And so you're going to see now that beautiful betta. And uh, maybe you can get a better view this time than you have in the past. I just put a little bit of food in there. It's interesting, when I put food in there, if I tap on the glass, that betta will come out of no place. And like I say, we've got three neon tetras in here. They just sort of sit in the middle of the tank. I feel guilty. Uh, they've got a tank to swim in, but really not a whole lot of entertainment. And so I'm half tempted to put them back in one of the bigger tanks where the other tetras are. What do you think? Very unusual coloration for a bed. I've never seen one like this before. My wife spotted him and uh, his fins continue to grow out nicely. Anyway, that's my new companion here in the office. Just a little five gallon tank with a couple interesting things in it. Got an autosynclius catfish in there, along with a betta and three neon tetras. And the plants are doing well too.
Well, we're going to capture the uh, big pleco here in this pie-shaped corner tank. It comes out all the time, and he's really gotten so big, I need to uh, I get rid of him. But he's not doing what that other one did. The other one started eating the neons, so I had to get out. Keep trimming back that Luigia, and it still keeps growing like crazy. Got the Amazon sword plant there in the middle, doing beautiful as always. Nothing new fish-wise. I, I really can't get any more fish, of course. And so I sit back here in the living room and just totally enjoy this beautiful tank. And then that little wig here eventually blocks the light and I have to go in and trim it. And I've been reluctant to uh, do much with that, but I found an easy answer just the other day. And I meant to take a video before I did. Just took that plant, one to the seed way in the back there, and just took the scissors to it. I didn't do it to this one, but I will show you where I did it. And there's four angelfish. This one's grown bigger. The one you see right here, growing bigger than the other three. They usually hang out together. Here comes another one. And sometimes when I'm seeing things in this viewfinder, I'm missing the big picture. And so I'm looking for something, and you're looking at it, and I can't see it. But there's the third one. One, two, three. And there's the fourth one over on the left-hand corner. A beautiful marbled angel. And they were like four for twelve dollars, so couldn't not buy them. And my wife spotted them, and I always appreciate it when she finds something she likes. And then, of course, we have the bow tank, and this is where that broad-leafed lugwee, I think it is, in this you see in the center here. Uh, that was the one I got like seven or eight sprigs for nine dollars from Discus Manus that I keep talking about. Well, it has grown so well since that. It took over this whole tank. I mean, you literally, the fish didn't have a place to swim. So just the other day I did what I said. I took it all out. I was going to make bunches and I realized with the root systems on some of it, if I just took scissors to it and trimmed it, I could put it right back in. The roots would do fine. And so that's what you see there in the center, right past those angelfish. And it's doing good again. Of course, I got a big bin of that plant in the office that I don't know what to do with. I wish some of you were nearby and needed some plants. The kabamba here is not thriving, but it's not dying either. And that came from the office tank. And I'll probably have to trim some of that and bring it out here too. I hate giving, uh, throwing away plants. My wife gets into this tank. She just, she's a gardener, so she'll take take it any way she needs to, and it's all gone, except what's left in the tank. Angelfish here are doing well. There's a mated pair. They've been laying eggs. Not thrive, uh, the eggs haven't survived, of course, but they, uh, they're a mated pair. And uh, just very enjoyable here in the living room to have this kind of color and good looking fish. Neon do well in here, especially with the bow plants over here. And we have a large Amazon sword garden in the back. I'm trying to be real careful in hand holding the camera. Just too lazy to put on a tripod and fight with that. Fight with that. But I was looking today. And I've got like 3,500 videos on YouTube. Uh, most of them of our portions of our church service that I rec record and put up on our website. But uh, interesting enough, and a number of you have commented 
from all around the world, by the way, uh, that you really enjoy it when I'm either visiting with Bruce or some of those earlier videos before Ray passed away, uh, where we talked about life together, especially in the fish hobby. And so I was looking at that. If you look at that 3,600 videos on YouTube, the top four are the videos of Ray's fish room and our conversations that some of you have enjoyed. If you haven't, go look it up, Ray's Fish Room uh, with Jim's channel. And between those four, they've got 60,000 views. Now I've got 211,000 views altogether out there. Mostly, I said, of the church service pieces. But lo and behold, Ray's stories and our chatting is, what, a fifth of that? 60,000. It's amazing. I don't know how people find it in the first place or why it gets so popular, but it really does. And I can't work in these tanks without thinking of my good friend Ray. We spent so much time together. Really lifetime friends. And I do miss him dearly. And I often will pick up the phone and call his wife, Joyce, and share the fact that I've been thinking about it, because she's always thinking about it, too. And so I, I hope that on this Thanksgiving week, again, here in the United States, that you have something like that to be thankful for. That you have a friend or something else that's so much part of your life that you can say, Thank you, God. And with that, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And like I said, I try to keep this nice and short. And just a quick visit. Nothing new going on except moving the plants. And fish are doing just fine. i got to do some more work with that office tank. It, it is a week ago that I cleaned it up. And uh, that kabami that you saw just filled back in that quickly. And I love that plant, just like I do the kabami here. I'm going to move some of that out here and uh, balance off the left hand side of this tank. Thanks for joining me. This is Jim from Beverly, New Jersey, saying thank you for my Thanksgiving, for my friends, and especially for my friend Ray. Till then, you take care.